Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon, and we're live. This is theCUBE, day three, SiliconANGLE's coverage of VMworld 2012. We're here in the hang space. Come by and see us. Uh, check out all the action on siliconangle.tv and youtube.com slash siliconangle. Go to Wikibon for all the research, and uh, we're here to talk about data management, data protection. It's been a theme all week uh, here on theCUBE. Um, we're here with two folks that uh, I think you're going to really enjoy this segment. Uh, Doug Hazelman is the VP of Product Strategy at Veeam. For those who don't know Veeam, uh, they are a smoking hot uh, backup company, really specializing in virtualized backup. We'll learn more about what they're doing, but really a lot of excitement. You go to the VMUGs, everybody's talking about Veeam. You guys are doing really well, so welcome. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, my friend Brian Regan, who has uh, just joined Actifio, uh, uh, East Coast startup, uh, focused on data management. Brian, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave, great to be here. Good to see you guys. So uh, here we are again, VMworld. It is the premier event in our, in our business, isn't it? Yes, it is. It I, know, I know we are talking about VMUGs. Uh, Doug, you guys spend a lot of time at VMUGs and this sort of, that's the divide and conquer, but this is where we bring everybody together and all the customers in one place. You know, what's the vibe like out there for you guys? Uh, I mean, for us, the vibe on the floor has just been phenomenal. And you know, we really kind of look at it from a core customer approach and, and really bringing in the community. So you know, we do a lot of the community events here at VMworld. You know, the, and, and Actifio actually did a, a, a flip cup tournament uh, the other night and we were uh, involved in that. In a flip tweet cup, out, as so in flip the cup? And yeah, as in flip you the lose cup, drink. drinking, yeah, you're drinking beer, yeah. flipping cups. Uh, yes. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good good event that you guys put on. So. And the VMware interns won, so uh, yeah. no surprise to anyone, yeah. the college kids won <laughs> the uh, drinking game. Yeah, so. and it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> fixed, right? It wasn't no, fixed. not at all. <laughs> We were, we were hoping for a smackdown between us and Symantec. Yeah. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> hey, Brian, this is kind of the, the coming out party, a VMworld coming out party for Actifio, right? I mean, Absolutely. You guys, this is really the first one since coming out of stealth. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about what you guys are doing. But um, let's start with the whole topic of, of data management. Um, we'll get into data protection. So, Brian, let me start with you. Um, what do you see as the big trends that, uh, that are affecting your business? What are you guys trying to capitalize on? You, obviously you're a startup, so you better be disrupting something. So yeah, talk about you know, what that disruption is and you know, what it means for customers. You know, as, as we look at the big themes that are emerging over the course of this week, and certainly in our industry, we all see it. I mean, big data, cloud, all of these themes are essentially um, you know, really putting a, a spotlight on the fact that the, just copies of data are growing exponentially inside of the enterprise. And people realize that there has to be a smarter, better way to manage all of these copies in my, inside of my enterprise. And unfortunately, a lot of the tool sets, legacy tool sets, were really instrumented and designed and, and continue to be built on the premise that there are tapes and there are, are tr trucks you put the tapes on and you ship them off site and when you need to recover, you really hope you can and uh, the tapes will come back. And you know the world doesn't work that way anymore. We need better tools, we need to disrupt that entire paradigm. And I think you know VMware themselves would admit that as much as we'd love to see a 100% virtualized world, we still live in a physical and virtual world, and we need tools that can accommodate both with the same SLA and do it in a much more efficient manner. So you guys have uh, an approach that attacks that copy creep problem, but yep. still provides me data access, is that it, right? Exactly right. It's all about you know, creating a single gold copy that's available instantaneously for test dev, backup, DR, whatever you need across a physical and a virtual environment. And uh, you know, and do it a lot cheaper, and in many cases, 90% uh, less costly than the traditional legacy. Okay, approaches. so when I when I ask how do you back it up, you're saying you back it up in exactly within, your, right. within your system. Really, it's it's about creating a single gold copy image of your production system in a point in time. It's time machine for the enterprise. And uh, if I need it from last week or last uh, last hour or last month or last year, it's available to me. I can mount it and I can run production off of it. So Doug, let's talk about some of the trends in backup. So we all we always talk about how you know virtualization breaks storage and it really breaks backup, right? Yeah. So that that coincided, that whole virtualization trend coincided with 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 <laughs> Veeam's you know, ascendancy, <laughs> you know, in a really good way. Can you talk about the trends that you know, where'd we come from and, and where are we today? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, as Brian said, there, there's a lot of disruption going on and, and we've been writing that and you know, the disruption really started with, with virtualization itself with VMware, right? It disrupted a lot of things in the data center. Everybody's looking at, okay, I can, you know, vert start virtualizing, but there's so many times they just kept on with their old with their old approaches. You know, they're running agents inside virtual machines and like you said, that breaks back up, right? Because now you've got everything sharing resources. So we saw the opportunity from a virtualization perspective to really offer something new to the market. 
um, something, you know, new ways of doing things, and really to drive innovation on what virtualization enables in data protection. So, um, you mentioned, you know, the SmackDown with Symantec, it was good fun and, uh, fun and tongue in cheek, but there's a lot of, of, of inertia around existing installed backup systems. How, what do you guys see, that, uh, having said that, we had Jason Buffington on the other day from mm -hmm. ESG, I don't know if you know Jason, yep. great analyst. He just did a study and he showed the, the, the large proportion, I don't remember the exact numbers, of uh, backup applications were relatively new, less than three years old. Right. So that's probably coincides with virtualization and maybe it's a good trend for you guys, but there's still a really big entrenched mindset. We don't want to rip and replace our existing backup software. So how do you guys, just start with you, Brian, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Well, and just building on that trend, Dave, I mean, you know, one of the things we've certainly seen since about 2009, and I think the data would, would support this, is that people are keeping their copies around um, for uh, shorter retention periods. Uh, unless it's a government mandated or regulated type of industry where it's healthcare, you know, patient record, you know, lifetime plus seven or seven years for, you know, uh, specific industry regs, people are not necessarily shipping their tapes off in, you know, for infinity anymore. And I think that that correlates with the rise in disk-based data protection. They realize that, in fact, most of the recoveries that I do are based on data that's 24, 48, 72 hours old. Why am I putting tapes away that are, you know, two years old and thinking I'm actually going to be able to recover from that? So, you know, a lot of this really comes down to, um, you know, people are rethinking what they need to do to affect their data protection SLAs. And as a result, they're rethinking the tools. And uh, I think, you know, the disruption in the entrenched backup market, I mean, it used to be sort of two big players and then everybody else, and then Commvault came along and started to disrupt the big players, and, and we're seeing new entrants, you know, certainly, uh, you know, Veeam and, and Actifio and others coming into this space. But I think it really comes back to CIOs and even CFOs really having a, a, a complete rethink about what do we need to do to protect our business, how are we doing it, and what tools do I need, and ideally, how can I reduce the number of tools that I need to actually keep my business in business? So Doug, Veeam's obviously having success, and I'm, my, my premise is it's having success because you know, the, the stress that virtualization puts on backup, you guys you know, are like the aspirin for that. Um, <laughs> so people saw that and said, great, you know, let's hop on that. We were talking off camera, um, and it's relevant to what Brian was saying about this notion of snapshots. You guys had, uh, have a capability around HP's left hand. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about snapshots and how they fit into the future of backup and more importantly, recovery. Yeah, so you know, we view you know, from, a, from a SAM perspective, right, on primary storage, a SAM-based snapshot is not a backup, right? Because I, I, as I like to say, your, your SAM could always be affected by a fire, flood, or idiot. Um, so something, something could go wrong and something Oops. could happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so from, a, from a tier one approach, you know, we, we, take, we look at that as being able, to, how, do we, how do we enable the customer to you know, recover from the native capability that's in their SAM? So we drove some integration with HP, um, around their store virtual VSA product and left hand, which you know the store virtual VSA is based on left hand, uh, to allow customers to be able to use that first tier and be able to recover gran very granularly. And from a snapshot perspective, you know the SAN-based snapshots are much less stress on the infrastructure when we're talking about virtualization than initiating hypervisor-based snapshots and how how you know as the virtual machine is running, it has to once we're done, then we have to consolidate that back. Um, there can be a performance impact. So we get much better RPO by leveraging the recovery capabilities of, of what the SAN can provide. So Brian, you mentioned time machine for the enterprise. That's a term we actually used in theCUBE in 2010 here at, at, uh, upstairs uh, across the street at uh, VMworld 2010. And it's, it references, it's a metaphor for the uh, Apple's time machine. Right. Notion being that you dial up or dial down your RPO uh, based upon the, 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 the frequency of snaps, right? right? So, Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, is that, in your guys' opinion, the new model for data protection? I, I think so, right. I, I mean, obviously, um, we're talking about disk-based paradigms now. Um, and you know, ultimately, it really comes down to um, snapshots, but smart snapshots, right? Because all, you know, why didn't snapshots take over the backup uh, space 10 years ago when NetApp came out with this you know, really you know, awesome capability, well it just chews too much disk and it's too expensive if done the traditional way to really displace some of these other tools. Nowadays, you know, what Actifio does is really takes a snapshot but then creates virtual you know, images of those available for any point in time. Uh, because you really don't want to have to keep storing all the snapshots. You want to create a single gold disk image of your production system at any point in time and then have virtual access to it and then uh, the ability to mount that um, 
you know, at any point in time. You don't want to keep you know, spending gobs and gobs of dollars on disk. No matter how d cheap the disk gets, it's still expensive and it still consumes floor tiles. And, and Doug, what's your point of view on the, the, the trend toward you know, using snapshots as a, as a, as a backup mechanism? Um, what's, what's, what's Veeam's uh, perspective? So our, our, our perspective, you know, from, a, from a SAM perspective, is that snapshots are not backups. Right? They're, they're, a, they're a tier of data protection to give you very fast RPO, but they're not a replacement for you know, backing your data up and then storing it on, you know, in another location, another physical location, or even off the SAN, you know, because if you lose your SAN, you've lost your backups if you're relying on snapshots. So it's a backup when it gets off-site. Yes. You know, synchronous or asynchronous, right? Yeah. Uh, distance wise. Yes. Okay, and, and, and uh, but, but so will that, sort of mode of operation, that snapping and then moving off-site, in your view, uh, eventually replace sort of the traditional backup methodology? Um, I, I definitely think it has the capability to do that, but what is important from our perspective is to make it easy to work with those, with those snapshots. Um, and that's one of the things I think if we look in the industry today, it's very complicated to be able to utilize those SAM-based snapshots. And at Veeam, we're all about powerful, easy to use, and affordable. So we really focus on making things that are easy to use. Um, you know, it doesn't take a, a PhD or, or three weeks of consultants to come in and, and install it. The customer can download it and instantly use it. What about archiving? We were talking off camera about uh, Amazon's Glacier. Uh, what's your perspective on that? Um, I think Glacier is a great thing for the industry. Um, especially, you know, I, I feel sorry for the guys that drive the, the tape trucks because I think they're going to be out of business soon. You think so? I think so. Really? If you were CIO, you'd put your archives in Glacier? Well, I mean, you know, you have to, you have to understand in, in terms of, you know, what business model are they going after, right? I think if you look at the mid-market and below space, I think they're going to be much more receptive to those types of technologies. They're, they're much more willing to change, they're much more willing to embrace these types of things uh, than maybe the large enterprises are. I say if, uh, if you're cool with an SLA of, uh, we'll do our best, and if we don't, we'll... We'll apologize, <laughs> you know, then put it in there. Yeah. If not, you better be careful. Yeah. Unless, <laughs> um, a, unless a thunderstorm hits uh, the D.C. area, in which case you might not get it back ever. You're right, yeah. but, but Doug, to your point, Amazon's always been a trendsetter, yeah. um, and it, it probably does mark a, a catalyst point uh, for other types of services in the deep archive space. Uh, interesting comments about the tape. I mean, you know, you know the Chevy truck access method, right? You just yeah. jam as many tape, tape, uh, tapes on the truck. That's still the fastest way to move data and pretty cheap way to move data, so I'm not sure I agree with it. It's going to disappear, but uh, the point is that it's going to chip away at, uh, at a piece of that activity. All right, well, we're very tight on time. I apologize that we have uh, such a short time frame here because we could go on forever about this, but I really thank you guys, uh, Doug and Brian, for coming on theCUBE and sharing your perspectives. Uh, have a great rest of the, uh, the event, and. Uh, I hope you can come back and uh, join us again. Thanks, Great. Dave. Thank Great you. to be here. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor.